what are the top five lures, rigs that you must have when you're out here chasing yellow perch? I'm gonna go through that in this video coming up. So if you're new to the channel, what I like to do is help you guys catch fish. And some of the ways that I do that is either through fish reports, product reviews, or give you tips on lures and techniques that you should be trying. And we're getting to that point of the winter out here on Lake St. Clair where the bite starts to get tough and some guys begin to really struggle to catch fish. Well, what I'm going to do is show you the top five lures and rigs that you should have tied on every time you go out ice fishing here on Lake St. Clair. Now, that doesn't mean that the colors I'm going to show you are the ones you have to have, but it's some of my favorite colors, so maybe that'll help you catch a few fish the rest of this winter. Now, what makes a drop shot rig so versatile, and you can see I got a picture of one right here, um, you can use an open water, you can use an ice fishing, but in an ice fishing application, it does a very, very good job of presenting a live minnow down to the fish, and you can also fish soft plastics the same way. Now, because yellow perch are such a curious, curious fish, a drop shot can be extremely deadly, and for this very, very important reason. On a drop shot rig, you're gonna have your hook or your bait above a weight. And that hook is originally attached right to that main line, the same main line that that weight is attached to. And what you wanna do is drop it down on the bottom and use that weight to create some, some disturbance on the bottom, create that puff of sand and soot. And a lot of times these yellow perch will come in to investigate it. And as they come in, they go, ooh, what is this thing just quivering right there? Um, as you can see here in the clip that I have, I, this is actually from a video I did with Michigan Outdoors where I kind of demonstrated how a uh, drop shot works. Um, the only difference is in open water, I don't want to ever lose contact with the bottom. But in ice fishing, sometimes I do like to bring it up and then let it smack back down. Now, do you have to use drop shot weights for this? No, you don't have to. You can use larger split shots in the three, the five, and the seven as your weight, or even a two and a one if you can find them, uh, you can use that as your weight and that way you can easily change it out and change how fast that bait gets back down. And one thing you'll notice is that almost everything I'm showing you is designed to fish around speed. So you can get up and down, even when these fish are lethargic and kind of negative, it's still extremely important to get up and down and get after you catch a fish, get back down as fast as you can so you can catch more fish. Hey, did you get the notification about my last video? If you didn't, be sure you click down below, hit that red subscribe button, and ding that notification bell so you get notified every time I post a video. Now, this next lure, it's gonna take a little bit of explain, a little bit of demo to kind of explain how this works. Um, but it is affectionately called a squid here locally and give me one second Let me rig one up and I will show you what it looks like So This is what guys locally affectionately call a squid or they dub this technique squidding what they end up doing is is taking a long teardrop style ice jig, something that has a little bit of width to it um, so that this tube will flare out. And what they do is instead of, when you normally fish these crappie tubes, you actually stick, it, stick the eye in and have the eye come out where this hook is. But in this case, we're gonna rig it backwards. And when you have this tied on the line and you had this rig backwards, you're gonna be dropping it down and this bait is gonna fall and kind of do a little swimming action and kind of dance around down in the bottom of the hole. It's a slower presentation. It works well for those medium to 
semi-aggressive fish. It works really well on bluegill and crappie as well. And honestly, this is probably the only place in the country where I know that this is regularly used by guys out on the ice. And this is what we call squidding. Now this third one is probably by far the one I am by far the most comfortable with fishing out here on Lake Sinclair. And that's because I've spent a tremendous amount of my time fishing inland waters before living up here on Lake St. Clair. And that's actually a tungsten jig and a small plastic. This here is a four, uh, four mil, uh, I believe it's a heavy metal tungsten. Uh, this is a power bait ice wiggler on here. Um, if you watch my Super Bowl Smackdown video, this is the exact setup that I did most of my damage on um for tungsten heads i generally am looking for that three to five mil for lake st Clair with, with uh, four mil being my my bread and butter size that i reach for the most plastic wise i'm gonna vary it um if i want a big profile so i can slow down the fall rate and kind of get to swim a little bit i'll go to things like a like a panfish assassin and then i'll actually have to change the style from this teardrop to more of a round ball style with a large shank on it so I can fish that bigger plastic on it. Uh, this teardrop style is really good for fishing live bait as well, but it really shines with the smaller plastics like this, uh, the Noogie, the Wiggle Fry from Angler's Choice, all very, very good selections for plastic trailers on these tungsten jigs. And it's something that I have a tremendous amount of confidence in. And when they get finicky, there's not much that can beat this except for maybe live bait. So the second most popular lure that you're gonna see in any of the tackle stores in any tackle box that you check out here on guys that fish Lake St. Clair on a regular basis, it's gonna be the jigging rat. Uh, now this one here is by HRT, which is actually out of Poland. Um, over in Europe, they call these lures balance lures. Uh, there's a lot of brands. The Jigging Wrap is probably by far the most famous here in the United States. Very, very good bait. You want to fish the twos, threes, and fives primarily, or other brands and comparable size to those when you're out here chasing yellow perch on Lake St. Clair. You notice on this one here, it's got a little tubing on the hook. You can take a soft bead, uh, pop that hook off, squeeze the egg over top of it, and put the hook back on, gives them a little bit of target. Some guys will run uh, a Jensen egg or a soft bead on the head of this as well. This is a good bait, it fishes moderately fast, um, so it is really good at looking for that aggressive big, big fish out here on Lake St. Clair. You know, I'm gonna give you a six lure to try out. A little bonus, a little sneaky snack. For these fish especially when they get extremely extremely difficult to catch this is actually my old school box a lot of lead solder jigs a lot of old school lindy jigs that are not made anymore but at the very bottom of this box see these guys right here these are called purists purists fall and move Similar to a squid or a bead spoon, but they're made out of lead solder, so they do not weigh a lot. So they fall really, really slow. You don't necessarily need to put live bait on them. You can put a single spike on them. They're deadly on bluegill and crappie when they get really, really finicky as well. But I have had some really good catches on those tough, tough, really tough days that even minnows don't seem to want to work for you. Give the purists a try. You might just find a secret deadly weapon that nobody else is fishing. So the number one most popular lure for guys that are out here chasing yellow perch here on Lake St. Clair is hands down the bead spoon. Uh, the bead spoon comes in a lot of forms. This here is a Mark's Willow. It's got a red hard bead on it. You'll hear guys talk about soft beads. Those are just the salmon eggs. And if you got a spoon you like, but you want to try a soft bead, just take the pliers, bust that off, slide the soft bead on, 
and you're good to go. There's a lot of shapes in bead spoons, guys. So play with them, try them out in a bucket or a fish tank or drop them down the hole when you have clean water and watch how they move and fall. That will key you in on which spoons are more aggressive, which ones fall faster, which ones fall slower. Uh, spoons like the Diamond Willow probably fall some of the slowest out there. Nice, lightweight, great for ultra shallow water fishing. Uh, the Marks, I like to fish these up to about 10 foot of water, somewhere with 5 to 10 foot. That's where I like to fish these. Uh, your Guster style spoons are really shine out deeper. Your little small, skinny, mini Ken's hooks really work pretty much through the whole gamut because of their slender profile. And if you haven't tried bead spoons, you need to get a very good selection of these in your box and try them out and stick with them because when you're fishing fast, there really is not much more that can beat a bead spoon here on Lake St. Clair. So this is a new video that I'm trying here on the channel and I wanna know how you guys, the viewers, think of these videos. Do you like them? Do you want me to do more? And is there a top five that you want me to cover? And if so, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you might want me to do, or if you like these or not, good, bad, I don't care. I need your guys' feedback so I continue to bring you great content here on the channel. So I hope this quick video helps you out the rest of this winter. As always, guys, thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, be sure to click down below, hit that red subscribe button, ding that notification bell so you get notified every time I post a video. And if you are subscribed and you didn't get notified, that bell probably isn't done and you need to click that again. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Tight lines, happy casting, and we'll see you on the next video. And becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me. If you decide to drop your buckets where you are and develop your gifts, I grant you, you will never ever be without. I grant you that your gifts will take you places that will literally amaze you.